Welcome everyone to Lymphedema 101, everything you need to know to make a difference. And um, today's session, uh, you're only going to see my slides for the moment. Uh, it's a, a session about basic education and reaffirming what you may already know. So the reasons why we must pay more attention to the lymphatic system are number one, early advice can certainly help us reduce the risk of lymphedema. Early signs of lymphedema are easily detected. Early intervention can reduce the severity of lymphedema. So that's the really important thing. The other uh, is that early intervention can certainly help slow the progression of lymphedema as well and reduce the health system and your costs, which is what's very important for us all to do. So let's have a look at the main reasons why we have to pay attention to the lymphatics. And number one, it's a sewage system and all sewage systems have to flow. It's a key thing. Secondly, a good lymph flow is needed for cell health. Our cells are all bathed in, in lymphatic fluid. And you can imagine if, that, if the bath in which all the cells are not living isn't good, hasn't got the right composition of, of um, food and, uh, and oxygen and carbon dioxide and things, the cells are not gonna be happy. The other thing is that whenever and wherever lymph flow is slow, we get more fat deposits. And the deposition of fat is a big enemy of our lymphatic system. Also, whenever and wherever we've got reduced lymph flow, we get more infections simply because our defense part of the lymphatic system is not working properly. So our immune response is poor when the lymph flow is poor. Something we've got to remember about and remember. Now you see this diagram here, you can see the yellow bits, go down and have a look at the feet. So everything that comes out of our blood vessels in our feet, which, is for, which leaks into the tissues, has got to go right up past the knees, past the groin, past the tummy, through your chest to your left shoulder. So the lymphatic collector pathways, in that case, is very, very long and very torturous. And you see the same drainage pathway from the left arm and the left side of the head. But if you look at the orange part there on the right, the drainage of lymph from the right arm, the right side of the head and the right chest goes into a different drainage uh, point at the, uh, in the right shoulder. So there's a couple of totally separate and different lymphatic pathways. But the one that's of concern and of interest to us for the general body and the legs in particular is the one that drains into the left shoulder. So we must think holistically because of that. Now have a look at this picture, this movie that's coming up. This shows us why we have to think, assess and act holistically when we are dealing with the lymphatic system. So here we go. You can see here the fluid from the right arm draining into the right shoulder. And now we see that big picture of the fluids draining in the lymphatic system from the legs, through the groin, through the chest, through the tummy, from the left arm into the left shoulder area. That long torturous pathway is why we must think assess and act holistically and why the big picture well you can't put water in a bucket that's already full of water that's the principle i can't put any more lymph in the lymphatic system if it's already full of lymph so we've got to empty those areas first before we can put things into it now the other important thing about our knowledge now is a little bit different to what it was 10 years ago because whatever leaks out of our blood vessels now we know is taken up by the lymphatics. Before we used to think that stuff leaks out of the blood vessels, some of it goes back into the blood vessels. It doesn't, except in our lymph nodes. So our lymphatic system is absolutely crucial at the moment. And I hope everyone can hear me well. And um, if not, please message, um, mes message Deb and let me know if you can't hear me right. Now, our organization of the lymphatic system is. Um, as you see in this diagram, have a look down at the bottom of the slide there, you see the muscle layer and you see some big vessels above the muscle with a connecting vessel between them. That's called an anastomosis. Our lymphatics have got lots of connections. Up the top, you see the skin and some hair and the like. So this is the area where we're going to get lymphedema. It's superficial, it's above our muscles. So something that's really important to remember. It means it's fairly easily accessible in a way for us. Have a look at this picture here. You can see how our lymphatics, I'm just gonna stop it for a second. You can see in this picture how our lymphatic fluids, the stuff that's leaked out of the blood vessels is taken up by our lymphatics. Here it goes again. So 
Every time fluid leaks out, it has to be taken away. And here you see an initial lymph collector, a lymph capillary. We're now going down deeper into the tissues, still above the muscle, but you see here when you're looking at them, look at them now, they're starting to pump. And our lymphatic vessels deeper in the tissues are pumping all the time like you see here. And that pumping is helped by any muscular activity that we're involved in. Here's the vessels that you saw earlier taking the fluids eventually away from the area to the nearest lymph node. And the key point in all of this is that we have to get the fluid into the lymphatics and then we have to get it moving along. Now what you just saw was a picture in this area here, right here. This is the uptake in this area of our, uh, our lymphatics in our skin. So let's move on to the next slide. Our lymph collectors that you see here in this picture, you see them carrying these little parcels of lymph in them. You can see how small these, these, areas, these areas are here, this area here. See how small it is? By looking down here, there's a pair of tweezers. Here's the size of one of those, those lymph angines as a part of a lymph collector. There it is there. That's how big it really is, a millimeter at most. But if you're looking at them, what are they doing? They're beating slowly at about six to 10 times per minute. The beat rate varies with load. The more we put into them, the faster and harder they beat. So a big secret with the lymphatic system is get the stuff into the lymph, in, into the lymphatic system in the first place. And then, as you'll see in the next slide, every time we move our muscles, whether it's isotonically or isometrically, uh, it's going to help the fluids go into the lymphatics and then along them. And here we see the impact of muscles being moved. Look at this. So imagine everything around this vessel is a muscle. It's moving and along here, it's helping the lymph pump along those lymph collectors. Here's another example. What I'd like you to all do now is just run your hand over your forearm. Just up from your, hand, up from your fingers, up your forearm. Every time your hand runs over the tissue, imagine that's my hand up here. We can see my, my artificial hand. Every time I move my hand here, that's what happens. The tissues are moved like this. And you can see down here in the bottom, all these lymph vessels just rocking around. Every time it moves like this, it helps to flow along these lymph vessels. It's really important to get that lymph flowing to improve our tissue health and our well-being. Our general parts of the lymphatic system are called lymphatic territories. Each of the territories are separated by a boundary called a watershed. As I've told everyone before, it's like the boundaries between South Australia and Victoria. And we, at the moment, we don't want to see too many Victorians here because of COVID, but the lymphatic system is a little bit like that as well. Um, however, most often lymphatic borders, the lymphatic watersheds are open because when one's congested or full, we can open up another one and get the material into that other lymphatic territory, or in our case, across, we can go to Victoria if we want to do. Okay, here you see an example of those territories in the watersheds. Have a look here. You can see here in the right arm. Look in the upper part of the right arm, three territories in the, we'll go back to the other slide. This one again here, three territories in the, in the forearm. And every one of us has got them, but we're all got them in slightly different positions and slightly con different configurations. So please remember, we're all different with these lymphatic territories and watersheds. Here you see the lymphatic territories of the legs. You can't, there's another one down here behind the knee that's not shown very well. But this one here now where I've got this arrow moving is one where when the lymphatic system's not working that well in terms of draining fluids from your legs, that's where the fluid accumulates, most often in that territory. But more about that later. Just remember, territories and watersheds, different drainage pathways, and every one of us is different. What's important to know about the lymphatic system? It's a low pressure system. It's not like our blood pressure. The other thing we have to remember, the, the, the volume of lymph is very, very small. And in fact, you know, a total out of our arms every day of about 100 mils, a total out of our legs every day of about 400 mils. So it's not much, but it's important we clear it away. So you can see therefore that the lymphatic system is slow flow, slow acting, low pressure, small volume. Okay, if you imagine a teaspoonful of fluid leaking out of your, coming up your lymphatics per hour, um, it's not much, is it? Five mils per hour and in your legs, it's about a tablespoonful 
per hour draining, but it has to be drained. It has to be taken away. Otherwise we've got problems. Okay, the other thing about the lymphatic system, I've got a few more minutes because we started a bit late, is knowing your risk. Um, if you don't have lymphedema but are worried about getting it, and it's also important for you to know your risk and your modifiable risk factors uh, if you want to be proactive. Reducing the risk in any event, in any situation, is always good for you and um, can make things um, much better than what they might be. So let's just have a look at some of the key risk factors and your other speakers will be talking about these later on. But let's have a look at what contributes to our lymph load. That's the load on the lymphatic system. That's what's waiting to be taken away and must be taken away by our lymphatics, by our sewage system, if things are going to go well. Well, number one, skin. Keep it in good nick. Number two is blood pressure. The higher your blood pressure, the more fluids are leaking out of your blood vessels and the higher the load on the lymphatic system. So if you've got hypertensive, get your blood pressure fixed. The strength of our small blood vessels. You might notice some of us bruise easily. If we bruise easily, that means more fluids leak out of our blood vessels, more load on the lymphatics. So we can make them stronger. Infections, wounds, cuts and scratches are all problems for our lymphatic system. They all add to our lymph load. And one of the other things, which is for some surprising, is that weight and the type of fats in our diet can add to the load coming from our tummy area. And this can sometimes affect the ease with which we can drain fluids out of our legs. So fat and weights are important. And we've also got a consideration of the issues with our veins. You know, our lymphatics and our veins are very close together. And in fact, a lot of our veins are actually inside uh, sorry, a lot of our lymphatics are actually in the walls of the veins. So whenever there's anything going on with the blood vessels, the veins, sometimes there's some problems can occur with our lymphatic vessels. So that proximity relationship is important. The other thing here, we, this applies to South Australia mostly, soft tissue damage is a risk factor. Keep away from sharks. Okay, so every time you have tissue trauma, you know, have a motor vehicle accident or something like that, it damages the tissue, it damages the lymphatics. And really makes it difficult for the fluids to be taken away. And that's why whenever you get a tissue damage, you get a little bit of swelling, temporary in the first place, but it might last for a long time. So let's just have a look at a couple of those things again. Here's what happens if you're a little bit overweight. Whoops, sorry, we didn't, we weren't able to get overweight. Here we go. As, as you get a little bit uh, fatter, a little bit heavier, your fat cells, which you see here, get bigger and bigger. As they get bigger and bigger, they squeeze these lymphatic vessels that you can see here. I'll just run this quickly again in my last couple of minutes. Here it goes. As you get fatter, these fat cells get bigger and it squeezes these lymphatics. But interestingly, so increase when you've got lymphedema. It's part of the stages of lymphedema. We'll look at that in a second. Now, you've seen a message come up. My internet connection is unstable. It's because the power just fluctuated up here where we are, which happens daily. But anyway, risk factors. My last few minutes, beyond your control, lymphatics and veins being close together. Problems with veins can cause problems with lymphatics. And you can see here, there's our lymphatic. They're right in the walls of the veins, which you see here in white. So they're so close. Other factors which may damage the lymphatic system that we all know is this, surgery. It's necessary to remove a cancer, but in the process of surgery, the lymph vessels are damaged. But in here, you can see the fluid goes from one damaged lymph vessel, which is here, to another one which is working quite fine. And that's the whole business of the lymphatic system finding new pathways and for therapists helping you find those pathways. Other things which may damage the lymphatic system is radiotherapy, because when you look at this area here, it's tough. Lymphatic vessels can't grow through this area. They can't work in this area because it's hard and tough, like the chewy bits in a piece of steak. So there is also another connection, the fat connection. And it's an important thing to remember. This is why it's important to pick up lymphatic problems early on, because it's fluidy. And when when lymphedema has been around for a while, lymph flow gets slow, more fat deposits, and fat cells produce these inflammatory molecules which make things worse. And one thing that we will need to remember is that our diet may infect the inflammatory process because some parts of our diet 
Some types of diet are anti-inflammatory and some are pro-inflammatory. More about that later. A few words about lymphedema. Here's where it is. You see the lymphedema, we're concerned about it in our arms and our legs. Here is in the superficial parts, in, in the, near the surface. There's our muscle in that color there. There's our bone. And here's where the lymphedema occurs in our subcutaneous tissue. So it's superficial. So it's easily manageable from one point of view. My last slide for those who are getting anxious, and I know Deb is, I've gone a bit over time, sorry. Lymphedema has got three major stages, fluids, fats and fluids, and then fibrous and fatty. And the idea is to pick it up when, and manage it when it's in this early fluid stage before it goes to the end. So you've seen here that picture of, of increasing fat, and I can't emphasize the importance of that enough. This is the progression of lymphedema fats and fibers and stuff. And if we can get a leverage on that, it's really going to make, make an improved outcome. So um, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to just, whoops, I'm just going to stop there um, because I just want to say a couple of words about early detection. Early detection is really important. Treatments are simpler. We're dealing with fluid and you can main, manage it if given the right information. And that's what today is about. So thank you very much. I'm just about to stop sharing. Thanks, Neil. Um, we don't have any questions. <laughs> How embarrassing. We left That's all that. It's all right. Time. You can always ask questions later on, should you wish. Okay. Um, the other thing is, somebody wants to see your Alaska hat. <laughs> oh, my Alaska hat. That's because it's. Notice this. I'll put the. There it is up here. I've got hair on my head when, under these conditions. It's so cold. It's seven degrees outside at the moment. So yeah. um, when you don't oh, have you... any hair on your head, you need some hair, on, uh, artificial hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that did come through in an email, I might just ask that now, is that um, somebody was asking if there's any benefit of do, using a pump for leg lymphedema and wearing compression at the same time. A pump and compression. That's a very, very good question. Um, hmm. I hope I, that person's on here. There's a few people missing, but um, but yeah, somebody had emailed that through. Yes, I'm I'm not quite sure if anyone's ever done any research on that, but you would imagine one of the two of the important things of lymphedema treatment is really compression. It's the core of, of our treatment, and then variation in pressure is the next most important part of it. So this is giving you those two things. So it, it may give us a much more beneficial outcome than either of them alone. It's like when you've got a compression garment on, you, it's, it's, they, we know it works best when you're actually uh, doing some sort of movement, when you're, you're moving your legs or your arms. So it may be that IPC and uh, compression is going to be fantastic. And it's something we might just have a quick look at and see in a couple of weeks' time. Hmm, cool. Um, and one question has come through on the chat. Um, is types of dietary fats to avoid. So can you just maybe quickly? Yes, basically the, the long chain fats, um, long chain fatty acids, um, they're the ones to avoid. Um, there's plenty of lists and plenty, plenty of that advice available from dietitians and nutritionists. But long chain fats um, have got lots of carbon atoms in them, you know, 12 or 14 or 15 or 16 carbon atoms, and they must be absorbed from our tummy, from our intestines via the lymphatics. So that puts more of a load on our lymphatic system coming from our, our mesenteric or our tummy area. And that can sometimes impact on the lymph flow from our legs. And sometimes even that, that milky white lymph containing lots of fats from our tummy area can leak down into our legs and show up as something called chylus reflux. So we have to watch about the, the type of fats that are in our diet, making sure they're mid-chain or short-chain fats. And that's, that's another thing we can talk about one day. Okay, yes, will do, yes. Lovely, thank you.